Hi everyone. So this video is going to be my first video of this series I'm going to be doing called Resin Crafting for Dummies. Now since there are so many different types of resins out there, I'm only going to be talking about the clear two-part epoxy resin. I'm going to discuss everything you need to know, so I hope this will help beginners and people who are looking into trying it. So the question is, what is a two-part epoxy resin? Well, it's a craft medium that requires two liquids that are mixed together to activate an exothermic chemical reaction where the liquid cures or hardens into this plastic-like material. And it's commonly used in the arts and crafts community since the application is so versatile. It's very popular in casting in molds to make jewelry, charms, figurines, model pieces, and so much more. And many artists use it to coat or laminate their artwork on canvases and even MDF boards to give their work a nice glossy finish. Also, people used to coat tabletops and bar tops. Another way people use that has become very popular is resin painting. So as you can see, there are so many different ways to use resin. All right, so as mentioned earlier, two-part epoxy requires two different liquids. One is the resin and the other one is the hardener. The hardener is the chemical that activates the resin to cure. Now, depending on the brand, the resin will have a specific ratio for mixing. The most common ones are the one-to-one -one ratio, which is equal parts, and two-to-one ratio. For two to one ratio, the higher number is the resin and the lower number is the hardener. Again, depending on the brand, it's either measured by volume or by weight. So it's very important that you follow the directions from the brand of resin you're using. All right, so let's talk about the specifications of resin that's important to know. The first one is pot life. So what is it? Pot life, or sometimes called work time or working time, is a window where the resin is still workable. Because once the two parts are mixed, the curing process starts right away. And the pot life can range from 20 minutes to even a few hours, depending on the brand. And with time, the resin's viscosity changes and it gets thicker and eventually too thick to be able to work with it. Also, knowing when your resin starts to get a little thick is beneficial when you want to suspend your inclusions without them sinking to the bottom. Inclusions such as glitter, powder pigments, stickers, you know, even heavy items that tend to sink, and items that tend to float like wood, foam, and dried flowers. Second thing that's important to know is its cure time. Now, depending on the brand, it can take anywhere between 6 to 24 hours for the resin to cure to a tack-free stage. That means it's not sticky when you handle it, but remember, it's not fully cured. Because it takes anywhere between 48 hours to 7 days for a full cure, um, try not to handle resin that's not fully cured too much because any marks or indentations left on the surface will be permanent. Now some resin brands will cure with some flexibility with self-healing properties while others may cure rock hard. Resin that's flexible usually will become even more flexible when heat is applied whether it's from a direct heat source like body heat or from indirect heat source like the ambient temperature. But the degree of the flexibility will vary from brand to brand. So depending on the application, you may want a finish that is more flexible with self-healing properties, or you may want a hard glass-like finish. Now let's talk about color stability. 
and UV stability. They're pretty much the same thing. So epoxy resin in general will yellow over time despite what the resin manufacturers advertise. But exposure to UV rays and heat can speed up that process. And depending on the brand, the speed and the level of the yellowing will vary greatly. Some can take just a few weeks, while some can take years. Our resin actually did a great experiment on comparing different brands on their color stability. I'll link the video somewhere in the video and also under the description box if you're interested in watching it. Another thing you need to know is that water will inhibit the reaction in resins. So any contamination from water will affect the curing and leave you with uncured, sticky, or soft finish. So to avoid this, make sure that anything you put in the resin has no trace of water or moisture. This includes pigments and dyes as well. So to color your resin, it's best to use powder, oil or alcohol based pigments and dyes. Um, there are many resin crafters using acrylic paints, you know, with no issues, but remember acrylic paint is water based, so it may inhibit the curing. So use it with discretion. But if you are going to use paint, it's better to use the professional grade paints that are highly pigmented with less water content usually has a thicker texture because the cheap craft paints have too much water in them. Now this goes the same with food coloring. If you want to use it to color your resin, you'll have better results with the powder version or the oil based version. Also resin loves heat. Because it releases heat during the reaction, more heat applied results in a greater or faster reaction. So if you work in a hot climate, you'll notice that your resin cures faster and the opposite happens in a colder climate. So the low temperature slows everything down. So that means heat will also decrease your pot life and cold will increase your pot life. Another factor that affects heat is the total amount of resin you're mixing. The greater the volume of these chemicals, the more reaction you will get. Now, I can tell you from experience that working with resin can be dangerous if not done properly. I've had occasions where I mixed a large batch of resin in a warm temperature and it started curing before my eyes. Like it literally started to heat up so much and so quickly that it started smoking. And it melted my mixing cup and stir stick. Now, I do want to note that this doesn't happen to, to this degree in all brands of resins. So I'm not trying to scare you guys, but I do want to say that it's good to be mindful of the amount you're mixing and the, the ambient temperature you are working in. The best temperature to work in is between 70 to 75 Fahrenheit. So basically comfortable room temperature. Okay, so moving on to where you can get resin. So resin is widely available online, such as eBay and Amazon. There are so many different brands, but you can also get it from your local craft or hardware stores. If you live in the United States, this includes Michaels, Hobby Lobby, Flix Art, Home Depot, Ace Hardware, and Lowe's. Since resin is considered as a hazardous material, it's important to take precautions and to protect yourself with proper protective equipment. First, work in a well-ventilated space. Crack a window or two open because some brands will give off fumes or VOCs, which stands for volatile organic compound. If you are concerned with that, look for resins with little to no VOCs. If you are sensitive, you may want to wear a mask or even a respirator. Also, please wear gloves to protect your skin. Resin may cause skin irritation or allergic reaction to those with sensitive skin. I recommend the nitrile gloves since they are more durable in withstanding chemicals and are more tear resistant compared to vinyl or latex. 
I would also recommend wearing an apron or something to protect your clothes because once you get resin on your clothes, it's impossible to remove it. In addition to protecting yourself, protect your work area. Since resin can get messy, protecting your table from uncured resin is important to avoid permanent damage. So line your work surface with non-porous liners such as plastic sheet, wax paper, or freezer paper. But my favorite is this extra large silicone mat. Since resin doesn't stick to silicone, once it's cured, cleanup is a breeze. I can just peel it right off. Alright, so another important thing I want to mention is that since resin is self-leveling, you want to make sure that the surface you're working on is leveled or else you will have an uneven finish. So use a leveler and adjust accordingly. So what are some basic starter supplies needed for resin crafting? First of all, you'll need a graduated measuring cups if you are measuring it by volume or you'll need a small scale if you are measuring it by weight. You'll also need plastic cups to mix your resin and try to use plastic cups that are labeled PP5 or polypropylene. Since resin doesn't stick to this type of plastic, you can peel the cured resin right off and reuse them. Other plastic resin doesn't stick to are HDPE and LDPE commonly used in food containers. You'll also need stir sticks. You can use popsicle sticks, coffee stir sticks, but my favorite is these plastic cosmetic spatula that I can reuse by just wiping off the resin after each use. Heat gun, lighter, or a torch is also very useful for removing bubbles in the resin. Baby wipes and isopropyl alcohol is also great to have for wiping off uncured resin. So that's it for episode 1. If you have any questions, please comment down below. My recommended products are linked in the description box. Some are affiliate links, which means I receive a percentage of the commission if you purchase from them. This will help me a lot to continue to create content on this channel, so if you can, please use my affiliate links. Thank you very, very much. If you found this helpful, please give me a thumbs up. If you are new, consider subscribing. Please make sure to hit the notification bell so you're notified when I post new videos. Alright, thanks for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Please look forward to episode 2.